A light ray is incident normally to the long face, the hypotenuse, of a 45-45-90 prism surrounded by air, as shown in the figure below. Calculate the minimum index of refraction of the prism for which the ray will totally internally reflect at each of the two sides, making the right angle. So we have to ask ourselves a couple questions. First of all, what is the, the angle of incidence for this reflection right here? Now, so if this is a 45-45 triangle, that means that this is a 90 degree angle here. And this is a 45 degree angle, so this must be a 45 degree angle. And so this right here, it makes a 90 degree angle and right with the other face. And so you know that the angle between the beam and the normal angle, otherwise the angle of incidence, has to be 90 minus 45. And 90 minus 45 is equal to 45. So my angle of incidence this first time is equal to 45 degrees. And then since it's reflected, the angle of reflection, this, this angle right here, has to equal the angle of incidence. And so because it's reflected this, uh, at a 45 degree angle, we know that here we have another 90, 90, 45 triangle. And so whenever I draw in the normal vector, I can do all of the same stuff I did over here and know that its angle of incidence is also 45 degrees. Now that's necessary because we have to find the minimum uh, index of refraction and that means we have to identify the sharpest angles. In other words, not the sharpest angle, but the the angles with the uh, lowest the lowest angle of incidence. So the more and more closer it comes to going in the normal vector, the harder and harder it's going to be to get total internal reflection. So now we can use Snell's law, and so that's the sine. Uh, so that's n one sine of the critical angle theta c is equal to n two times the sine of theta 2 which is going to be 90 degrees and 90 degrees causes it to be the sine of 90 is equal to 1 so that cancels out so we get n1 sine of the critical angle and we're, we're wanting our critical angle to be at least 45 degrees if not less so if it's the uh, sine of 45 n1 times the sine of 45 is equal to n2 N2 is the index of refraction for air, and it's asking us to find the minimum index of refraction for our substance. And so we have to isolate N1. And so to do that, we, we just divide by the sine of the critical angle. So N1 is equal to N2 divided by the sine of the critical angle. And you just uh, plug in your numbers. So for air, it's uh, surrounded by air. That's 1.000293 and divide it by the sine of 45 degrees. And that will give you a N1 must equal 1.414628. Now, I'm looking at this problem and I notice a couple things. First of all, there are no red uh, words or numbers. Red is the things that they change. WebAssign changes the things that are red. These are variables that they change in their questions. And so because they don't have anything that's changed, like they don't say air uh, or water, they could change those out for the problem and have a different variable. Um, but the, the word surrounded by air is not colored in red, so I don't think they're going to change that out as a variable. What I'm getting at is, as long as they're using this picture right here, and the angles are all the same, the minimum angle, the critical angle being 45, and the outside substance being air, then everyone should have the same answer. And this is the first time I've ever seen WebAssign do this, so that's kind of why I'm a little bit uh, intrigued. But ultimately, it should boil down to that should be your answer as long as your problem is written the same way mine is. And you don't even have to go through plugging this stuff into your calculator. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out my blog. The link is down in the About section of this video. And on the blog, you'll find cool stuff like 
other videos for the same chapter. And you'll also find uh, little download links where you can download calculators to uh, basically just punch in your numbers and solve these exact problems. So you won't even have to watch the video if you don't want to. The last thing I want to say is if you leave comments on YouTube, of course I will get around to responding, but I'm much faster if you leave them at the bottom of my blog, right down there. Enjoy your day.